Oh, man. I, I, these, are, these are just kind of random thoughts. Why is it no matter what color the bubble bath is you use, the, the bubbles always turn white? I, I don't know. I, y'all remember being a kid, pour pink in, pour blue in, still white bubbles. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still wrestling with that. Y'all pray for me. Uh, is there ever a day that there's not a mattress sale going on somewhere? I, it, I mean, and how many times can that place go out of business before they actually go out? Right? And I don't know if anybody, if this is you or not, but you ever been to the refrigerator and you can't find it and you shut the door and you leave and about five minutes later you're right back looking and it ain't nothing changed, right? It ain't like a gnome put anything at you. Are you still looking? Anybody, any lookers in the house? Let me, come on, be real with me this morning. Let me see you. I want some love. Or I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to bust you out. No, I, I may, well, I'm, I might. I'm, anybody, you ever been vacuuming and get the string and it won't cut, and you hit that thing for you end up picking it up? I don't know, just random, just random, random thoughts, random thoughts. Uh, and I, I'll probably stop with this one because we can keep going. But you ever get, get the trash bag off and you always, uh, why do you never grab the right end the first time? I mean, it's like I, I got to look at it two or three times before I get that bag to open. It's, uh, we, we need help. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Lord, if, if I don't even know how to open up a bag sometimes. How, uh, why do I think I can run my life? I need to look to you. Lord, have mercy. We need you, Lord. You said don't lean on my own understanding even in these things you show lord sometimes in the simplest of things i I can't figure that out how am i going to figure out the complexity of life but the awesome thing is is i don't have to lord in prayer this morning you said something my wife wrote it down and i'll get it from her later In, in my leading there's a feeding lord if i can be led i can be fed so show us something we need to see today father so we can have something we've never had But I thank you that you'll do it and even more because you are just that good. (laughs) You are just that good in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms chapter 36. Uh, It it is so cool how the Holy Spirit weaves the service together. And it's not by our doing, but it's by his doing. But Psalms 36, and uh, we're going to be a lot in Psalms today. But 36 and uh, verse 6. The righteous, thy righteousness is like great mountains, thy judgments are are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures, for with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. That is so awesome, y'all. He goes on to say, O continue in thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Oh, Father, we come in Jesus' name, just speak in a way that we can hear your word today. Father, you said the entrance of your word gives light, causes revelation to come. Lord, we don't need to hear with our natural ear, we need to hear with our spirit the things that you are saying to us, to the church, Lord, to position us to be in the place we need to be, to be the most effective we've ever been. But I thank you, Lord God, that even now it's already begun. Even now, Father God, things are moving, shifting, changing, rearranging according to your plan and purpose. And I thank you that we won't fight that flow, but we will be in sync with you. We will be in step with you because we have an ear to hear, Lord God. And you said, my sheep know my voice. So, Father, if there's any questioning today, I thank you that by the end of today, there will be a confidence to replace that questioning so that we can move boldly to the things that you have in Jesus' name. Amen. He said in verse 8, they shall be abundantly satisfied. Come on, say abundantly Abundantly. satisfied. That's me. That's me. That's me. You know, I've touched on this before, but I just felt the Spirit saying, go back, go back, go back, go back, and look at this because I, I, I see... Uh, even in my life and, and, and maybe in the lives of those uh, that we see uh, all around us, there's a searching going on. And the uh, old song that came out in our generation, and uh, so, so wrong, it was kind of catchy, but it do not mean it was right. I can't get no satisfaction. And, uh, but that's not the truth. That's, that's, uh, you know, if you read this promise right here, and I'm not the writer of this, I'm just a reader of this, but he said they shall be abundantly satisfied. Uh, that kind of bumps heads when I can't get no satisfaction. Right. Unless the author of that is not looking at this. Come on. Come on. And, and, and maybe that might apply to us. If we're looking for something that only God can bring, we're never going to be satisfied. Amen. But if we're looking into the Word of God, then there needs to be a satisfaction of life coming to you and I. Amen. Abundantly satisfied. We even sang, I heard it this morning, we sang Jireh. 
He's more than enough. I mean, do we sing it or do we mean it? Do we need to, maybe we need to sing it until we get it. He is more than enough. More than enough. And uh, so it, it's uh, Psalm 16 says, As I, at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. So it, it, if we're not enjoying that satisfaction, we need to get in the Word and maybe get some revelation to see what He really has for us. You know, and I know this may be pushing the boundaries on some of us. Well, you know, you know God's not concerned with all that. We just, we just trudge through life. We just got to plod along. I, you know, well, I want to look in the Word. How about you? I, I want to see what the Word says. I don't, I don't want to see what I've been taught. I want to see what He says. You know, I love the phrase, and I've been kind of meditating on this, you know, what would Jesus do? But a lot of times I need to go back and just look and see what did Jesus did. <laughs> you know, I, I, a lot of times we get into situations, and we're trying to question what's already been solved. I don't have to wonder what would Jesus do, because all I have to do is look by that and look at what Jesus did. Then I'll know how to respond, right? I, I need to get into the Word and see what the Father has already said so that I can address my current situation. I don't need to be waiting on an answer that's already come. He said we're going to be abundantly satisfied. Let's get some more Word on this. Out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, let something be established. So uh, look right in 37. Chapter 37, verse 1. Don't fret because of evildoers. Need to be envious of the workers of iniquity. They'll soon be cut down. No, we don't get glory, or we don't glory in the fact that they're going to be cut down. He's just stating a fact. They'll be cut down like the grass. He said, but trust in the Lord and do good, and you'll dwell in the land, and you shall be fed. He's going to take care of you if you're doing his will. He's going to always take care of us. He's going to not just meet our need. He's going to exceed our need, but we have to be in the right pasture if we're going to get fed. We can't be in the devil's field and expect God to feed us. Woo! Don't shout it down. That's all right. Let's just keep going. Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, not in the will of self. I can't be in the kingdom of PB. I got to be in God's, I got to be after his thing, right? If I want his food. Delight yourself in the Lord and he, am I going to have to come up with this? No, he's going to take care of it. He's going to do this. I, 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 we're going to, you're going to hear that point multiple times today because it is not according to the power of self that I have to do or I have to get. He's going to bring things into our lives. He said he will bring it to pass. He will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5, commit your way to him. Trust in him and who's going to bring it to pass? He is. Man, it's amazing how, many, how much I've strived to try to make things happen than if I have just had the presence of mind to wait on the power of God, to wait on his timing, to wait on him, he would have brought it about without all my struggling, with all my sweating. I didn't need to stay up at night. He's already up. Right? Somebody, you need to sleep good tonight because he's already got it. Ain't, ain't no sense both of us staying up. <laughs> you look at the bags under some of our eyes. You ain't packing for a trip. You need to get some rest. Right? Oh, Commit your, tr commit your way. trust in the Lord and he will bring it to pass. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as noonday. Drop down to verse uh, 16, time's sake. We can read the whole. It's all good. Sometimes it's hard to pull out what you need. You know, so go back and read the whole thing when you get out of time. Verse 16, a little that a righteous man has is better than the abundance of riches that the wicked may have. He, uh, he, he's saying God can take what you perceive as little and make it be more than enough. Don't be concerned about what anybody else has. You know, I, I, I love the story where the woman came and, and, and she said, I need help. He said, what you got in your house? God, God's not going to multiply your neighbor's stuff and give it to you. He's got to work with what you have. But if you recognize and surrender what you have, God can do some God stuff and make it more than enough. You know, when, when he multiplied the oil, it didn't just settle the debt the widow had. It said, sell what you got and live off the rest. Oh, he's more than enough. For the arms of the wicked are going to be broken, and the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the day is of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Look at this, verse 19. Even in the days of famine, they're going to be barely getting by. But what? Satisfied. Oh, even at 5% interest, we're going to be satisfied. 325 a gallon, we're going to be Come on, I'll say it like you know God's going to back you up. You know, I, I, we've shared this before. My wife and I have been together. We dated four years, and then we've been married for going on 43. So we've, it's been a minute. 
Right? I love how this generation just sums up time. It's been a minute. I, I, I about, it was so, Joel, bless his heart, is, uh, he was talking about back in the day. And I'm looking like, boy, you, there ain't no back in the day. You ain't even young. You, you ain't old enough to have a back in the day. He talking about like, like he'd been around for generations, you know. It's like, ah, oh, you know, and I was a kid. You still is a kid. <laughs> Where is he at? Oh, it, it, it doesn't dip down somewhere. But, it, but it, it so is, it's almost comical, but it's just, you know, perspective on things. But when we got married, I think we were coming out of the uh, Carter era, or right in that, and y'all don't even know that it's not. A, anyway, and uh, not my son Carter, yeah, obviously, because that was, a, I guess it could have been, because we were married, we could have had him, but uh, is, uh, when he was coming out of presidency, and uh, I think Reagan was about to step in, but in those days, the interest rate, just average home loans were 15. Anybody rem- date yourself back with me. Yeah, you remember. I mean, the average, I mean, and, and don't even talk about a credit card. <laughs> I mean, please. You know, a house rate was 15. So if he had me then, he's got me now. Even in times of famine. Even in times where, now he's, talking, he's not talking about, well, we're, going, we're in this world, we're just not of this world. Now, if you choose to stay connected to the system, of this world, then it's going to be on me and you. But when I, I see, you, see, you got to recognize the disconnect right here. I may be in it, but I don't have to be subject to it. I can get a heavenly override. He can show me stuff. He can show me things, how to work what I've got to bring a supernatural increase. If I'm not tied to the systems, if I'm locked into my job as my source, then that means I have disconnected from God as my source. How's he going to bring something into me if there's no supply line? I got to make sure I'm connected. And that's part of what he's saying here. If you believe this and he can do this, it's not according to his power. He said all things are possible if we can do it. No, help me. If we can believe it. See, sometimes our faith is in our doing. It's not in our doing. It's got to be in our believing. Even in times where it may look like this, I'm going to have that. Because God is able. God is able. God is able. I mean, we're going to be abundantly satisfied. Right? Psalms 103. Y'all know this, but we need to just get some of this in our spirit and uh, some stir some things up. Faith come by hearing. You know, we've said that before. But I think sometimes we, it, it's kind of lost its meaning uh, because it's not just the natural hearing that he is referring to here. Faith comes when that word we hear actually comes alive. It's more of a revelatory that he's talking about. If it just came by the audible hearing, we'd already be set, or we should already be set, right? So we know there's more to it. Psalms 103, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not. All of his benefits. And we're talking about God can set us up even when times aren't the best or they don't appear to be the best, but God can make them the best if he's my source. But I cannot uh, allow myself to get into a place where I forget these things. And clearly, that's why he put it. He, he didn't write this for his benefit. He put it in here for us. Right? Look at your neighbors. He's talking to you. And look at your other guy, other, your second choice. You two. You two. We all got to get this. We all have to get this. And forget not all his benefits, forgives all our iniquities, heals all our disease, all our disease, who redeems our life from destruction, crowns us with love and kindness, tender mercies. Verse 5, satisfies, satisfies, come on, sat, sat, it's not like he's, it's not like this is a, a bad thing that he's wanting to do for us. Yeah, it's amazing how, you know, the stuff we do, man. Is, 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 is sometimes you taste something in it is awful, and then you offer it to the person right to you. Oh, man, ah, try this. I'm like, I just about watched you lose it right here, and now you want me to partake? Or, or something that you may get a, 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 a whiff of, and it's like, oh. We, we are funny as a people, man. It, it's just, you know God got a sense of humor. Right? I, you just got to look around. Uh, I'm, 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 who, 
I mean it just the way we do things. Stop it. Don't you try to drag me down that road. Who satisfies our mouth with... Come on. I'm telling you, if we believe that God is anything but good, we're listening to a lie. We have heard something from somewhere that the enemy has tried to plant in us to get us to not believe that God is good and nothing but good all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. If something's happened in our life that is not good, then we're either looking at it wrong or we messed it up somewhere because it's not on God's side. You know, even like I said, if God's challenging us in an area, he's positioning us for greater. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, what, what you may be going through, and I understand it. There's a lot more to unpack in that. Uh, but anyway, he satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are going through. God's pouring it out. But I, I, wanna, I think we've kind of established, and we could come back and do more. We probably will. Uh, but that he's good, and he wants to satisfy. But we need to make sure we're not stopping the flow. Uh, we need to make sure that we're the ones not b- blocking the blessing, so to speak, right? I mean, if he's pouring it out, but I'm not seeing it, I'm not enjoying it, I, I need to make sure that on, on my side of the equation that things are right, that they are right. And, and, and number one, we'll look at First Peter chapter 5, got to stay humble. Got to stay humble. Got to stay humble. You know, it's a, it's a humbling thing for uh, a sheep to be led. You know, at a time where, I mean, and this goes way back. I mean, the enemy has been after us trying to, trying to inject society with pride for uh, quite a while. For quite a while. You know, uh, I mean, there was a song back, again, started in my generation. You know, I did it my way. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things the enemy has done. And, uh, you know, I'll just go there because I ain't political correct. Uh, even in the women's movement, there was a, a trying to usurp over the husband. And uh, it, it, we don't realize the, the way he's uh, attacked you and tried to get you to a place where you're operating in pride. I don't need a man. I can run my own thing. God set an order up. It's not that one's better than the other, but you're fighting the order of God if you don't understand it. And it's happened all the way back. And now you see men emasculated. We see it in TV shows where the husband is always an idiot on the TV shows. And it's been an eroding. It's been a pride. And, and how, how do we, uh, if, if we don't see unity in the home, why are we surprised when the kids start acting out, when the kids won't listen? You know, if one's rejecting the authority of another, if one's rejecting the position of another, why do you think your kid's going to obey you when you don't? And ultimately it rolls back up to, I'm doing it my way and I don't need God. And we've allowed the enemy to come in. The church retreated when we should have been advancing. Come on, that's good. And it's the truth. You know, and it's going on. That's why we got confusion even going on today. And we got, you know, now the government's saying, we'll, we'll do better with your kids than you can do. We need to wake up, church. God didn't call us to be political. He called us to be governmental. And, and we got stuff coming up, and we're going to make sure people are registered to vote. And I'm not telling you to vote one side or another, but you need to vote the Bible. You need to vote what God said. And righteous. Woo, yeah, right. First Peter, chapter 5, verse 5. You know, I, I, it, it's, it's, it's not God's fault, it's ours. We've elected people who don't have godly values. We've elected people who don't have godly morals. We, we bought into the lie of separation of church and state. You can't govern without this book. It's impossible to govern without this book. I mean, they're trying to manipulate the Constitution. They're trying to manipulate laws. They change laws all the time. If you can change it, what good is it? You've got to have something that's unchangeable. This word, I, I mean, and you can vote it in. Or you, this truth does not need a House of Congress to say it's right. It's right. It always has been right. It always will be right. It don't need man's vote. But man needs this book. Man needs this book. We'll never govern one another. I, I, where we think racism came from, we got away from the book. How is one person judged in a law and they get a stricter sentence than another person? Because we got away from the book. You, we're trying to put people in office. We need to put, well, that's a weird way to put it. You can't, I, but I'm just saying we need to put, the God, put God on the throne of this nation. 
That's how it changes. And, and, and that means we got to be involved. Not retreat mode, overtake mode. Overtake. You know, it, it's a lie. There, it, it ain't no separation of church and state. That's why we got the problems. It's to try, they're trying to separate church and state. Woo, they'll probably email me. Delete, 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 delete. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says, Likewise, younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Nothing wrong with that. There, there's, there's lessons that the younger generation needs from, the, from the, those who've been there, done that. But we, we, need, we, we have to also open ourselves up uh, to maybe embrace some of the things that they're doing. Not, 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 not if it's contrary to word, but I'm just saying, we're all different. We do things different ways. There's a lot of ways you can get to the top of the mountain. You know, different paths you can take. And we need to be open that my way is not the only way. Now, I'm not saying we get around the world. Jesus is the only way. But I see you see where I'm going with this, right? Uh, I mean, uh, the, the music may change, but as long as the message is the same. Uh, anybody ever been fishing before in here? In any way, shape, form, or fashion, right? You, you, have you ever used more than one bait? Put, let me see you. Yeah, I mean, you use a worm, use a cricket. I mean, how many even use an artificial? Right? Uh, how, how can we understand you got to change bait, but you never take the hook out? We're fishing, folks, and, and, and the hook's always going to be in there. Jesus is the hook. But the bait, the method, the methodology may change. And we, the younger gather from the older, and the, the, the older can glean from the younger. That's, that's how we get strong. That's how we stay strong. You know, and keep the enemy out. That, we, don't, we don't need these culture wars. We need the strength of one another. That's why he says, man, we got to submit to one another. Now, there's a hierarchy, you know, with, with elders and working down. But he said, yeah, everyone be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. Why? Because God resists the proud. Man, that devil, he's just all up on me, man. I say, ooh, it might not be the devil. <laughs> if, if, we, if we have positioned ourselves in a place of pride, What's this say? God is resisting. Now, you think you got trouble when the devil comes at you? You wait till the Father steps up. You believe for breakthrough till Jesus Christ, the sky is open, and you're going to be right. We all, we, you be right where you started. Blaming the devil, and it was pride all along. And we're the ones that were opposing ourselves. And the Word talks about those opposing themselves. Oh, man. Preach that. That's so awesome. We learn it. We learn it. We learn it. Humble yourselves. He always resists the proud. We need to finish that up for sure. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now, see, if we see the fullness of this, uh, we keep pride out of the way so that when God opens the door, there ain't no devil in hell can stop you from what God has for you. Uh, you know, we've shared before or, or talked about and looked at, you know, Moses uh, just pulling a couple out. Obviously, Jesus would be the most humble that ever walked this planet. Agreed? Right? Not a trick question. I mean, right? We agreed on that, right? I mean, having, ha having all that power at his disposal and allowing what he created to nail him to the cross, that, yeah, that requires a certain level of humility. Not quite there yet. Not a smoke, y'all. That's all right. Uh, and you'd have, you'd have done the same too, right? Yeah, we talked big until the first nail hit, and it's like, <laughs> right? It's like, man, it would have been, oh, it would have, boom. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway. Uh, so, I mean, he was, he was just the embodiment of humility. And, and, and by the same token, who was the most used this ever walked this planet? Jesus. Right. right? Moses, in his day, in his generation, talked about him being meek, talked about him being humble. Uh, and God, when he's speaking of his friend, says, I, I, I talk with him as a, as a friend face to face. Even Abram, Abraham, you think about these, we, we marvel at them, but it wasn't because of their outgoing nature. It wasn't because they were so charismatic, even though they could have been. It wasn't because they could entertain a crowd, even though they might, 
could have because they were so submissive to the plan of the Father. Now, also don't understand or don't misunderstand. Meekness is not weakness. It is strength in control. You know, right? We'll, we'll go back, right back and look at the, at the master. We'll look at Jesus. You know, the one who said, I could call legions of angels, start over, didn't do it. That is the absolute of power and authority and might. And, and I don't know why I, I, I just despise these pictures when they put Jesus and paint him some little frail, wimpy fellow. Uh, what? They're trying to emasculate him. You know, trying to get people, uh, you know, and I mean, it's unfortunate, but, you know, I don't want to follow somebody who looks like that. I mean, we don't realize the subtleties in the way the devil kind of comes in, and it shouldn't matter, but sometimes it influences people. But you can't, you can't do what he did. I mean, he's a carpenter. I mean, has anybody ever just sawed a two-by-four in half with a hacksaw or a saw, hand saw? Let me see you. You know, and if you hadn't, you ought to give it a try. And then put it down and do another one and do, do another one and do another one and do another one. And forget that that two-by-four didn't get to be a two-by-four because he didn't run the lows. He had to cut a tree down. <laughs> and then cut the sides off of it and make it to a two-by-four. Oh, come on now. I mean, you're not no little small wimpy fella at all. Even physically, without the God stuff working on you, working through you. Meekness is not weakness. So don't fight it. Realize. Now, there's, times, there's a time when strength needs to be used. 100%. 100%. Jesus could never have done what he did had he not been the strongest man ever walked this planet. You don't go through the beating and then carry your cross. Can't happen. Can't happen. Can't happen. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't go through what he endured and, and, and endure the temptation even in the garden when all of hell was coming at him. I mean, pores opened up, blood popping out of his vessels on his head. Such intense pressure. Anybody else would have broke. You know, there's times that you're going to have to rise up. There's, there's a strength that's going to have to come up when we, when we really start taking on some of these social issues. And I'm not talking about physically taking somebody down. But Jesus cleaned the temple. Made a whip and drove them out. They wasn't running. They wasn't running because they weren't afraid of him. <laughs> this boy finna kick out tail. We better. We better go. And they got up and left because there's a time for it, and there's a way to use it. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He'll exalt you in due time, casting your care on Him because He cares for you. Psalms twenty two twenty six says, "The meek shall eat and be." Satisfied. Some will say abundantly satisfied. <laughs> abundantly satisfied. It, it, it comes when we open ourselves up to be submissive to the plan of the Father. He said, and always acknowledge Him. He'll bring an order. He'll bring a direction. I, I don't care if you've done it a thousand times. Seek Him on the 1,001. Lord, is this still the way I need to be doing this? Things might have changed. Things might have changed even from this morning till now. We don't know all the things that are going on. We don't know, know all the influences and the forces that are, in fact, we, that are in play around the issues and things we're believing for, the things we're standing for, standing against. God does. So why don't we check with Him? I mean, we watch the weather and they get it wrong 90% of the time. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Philippians 4. Yeah, yeah you know it's funny because it's right. Oh, it's going to be sunny. Poo, poo, rain, 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 rain. Yeah, man, that's... I mean, you, it, it is. It's, it's, man, we as people, we, we is funny, man. I'm just saying. You know, I, I don't follow a lot of ball stats, but I mean, some of them you do, some of them, and it's like, and I'm not knocking really like ball players and hitters because I've tried, and it's, a, you know, it's like golfing. I, you know, it's to, to be able to hit that ball in a straight line, it is a gift. It's a talent. And, uh, you know, or baseball. Yeah, I mean, but we applaud a, a hitter. Man, they, they got a 340. You know, if they get a 400 average, man, y'all are awesome. He's missing, he's missing six out of ten. <laughs> we're not even hitting 50%. And we're, you, see, you, you see where I'm going with this, right? Man, we, need, we, we don't need to lean on self. We need to look to God. Amen. We need to look to God. Philippians 4, verse 10. Uh, Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul here, and he's, and he's talking about that I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection. Well, that's chapter 3. Let me go to 4. That's a good scripture. We might use it later. Uh, he's, he's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool here because he's actually talking about uh, they were going to send him an offering for the work that he was doing and hadn't had opportunity. 
And uh, he said, but now I rejoice that uh, at the last year of care has flourished again. You were able to get, you know, get, your, uh, get some supplies to me. He said, and I know you were careful, but you didn't have opportunity. You, you, you wanted to do, you just didn't have opportunity. But he said, I, I'm speaking not in respect of, of what I want or, or what I, maybe even what he needed. He said, because I've learned whatever state I'm in. He's not talking about Georgia, Carolina, right? He's talking about, you know, whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed to be full, to be hungry, to, be, uh, to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, the one we always quote, but we kind of forget what led him to this. I can do all things... Through Christ who gives me strength. Now, we're talking about walking in meekness, not stopping the flow, not getting in the way. But part of not getting in the way is learning to be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And uh, I'm not saying we lose the pursuit of the things that are ahead of us. I, 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 but what I'm saying is we got to learn to be content with where we are but never be complacent. And Because uh, I wrote down here, I, I'll never stop expecting God and believing God for more so that I'm able to do more. But it, it, we just I need to make sure our heart is in the right place for why we want more. Right? It, it, uh, sometimes they get, well, if I just was at this level, then I could do this. Uh, no, we're, we're missing the point because we're, we're, we're looking at my ability to supply my need and not his ability to supply my need. So I, that's why he said, God can supply all your need according to his riches, See, and we're getting back to that place where I don't need what the world says I need to have to be able to do what God says I can do. So I, one, once you get to that place, I'm content. Put me wherever you may want to, but you will not stop the anointing on my life from being able to do what God put me here to do. In the worldly, I can abase or abound, but you'll never shut my flow down in the spirit. Come on, you see where he's going with this. We get to the wrong mentality. We think out here influences in here. But in here is going to influence out here. That's why you could take Joseph and he could be good in Potiphar's house. He could be good in the pit. He could be good in the prison. I'm going to run it all. I can abase, I can abound because out here don't stop it. This. This right here, my flow with God changes this around me. Man, when you get hold of that, come on. Because the world is saying, well, you know, you're just wrong side the tracks. I'm going to move the tracks. <laughs> we got to learn to push back on this. Well, you, you, you know, it, it's just a deck stacked against you. In the, understand, even in the races, how the enemy has, has tried to sell us a lie. Now, I'm not talking about in the natural, yes. That goes without saying. It goes without saying. But we're not in that system anymore. So do not let your mentality be locked into that system. If that's the case, then an American gospel will never prosper in third world countries. But we can go to some third world countries that got 100,000 seat auditoriums paid for in cash. How are they doing that? Because they realize they're tapped into a different system. And you're not going to sell me a lie that just because I look a certain way, I'm limited to a certain thing. Not when I realize who I'm connected to. You realize how much, I mean, how we shattered the lies of the devil? Or maybe how much we've leaned in and listened to the lies of the devil. Well, you know, it's this, it's this class thing or this race thing, and you'll never have, mm -mm. you don't understand who my Abba is. And you get this right here, that's how it works no, any place on this planet. Any place on this planet, this works. Because this is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's not bound. Whoo. Come on, come on. Look at, your, look at your neighbor and say, don't stop the flow. Don't stop the flow. Don't stop the flow. I, I know we're pushing some stuff this morning. I, I, there's some old lines that we're pushing back. But, I mean, God wants to kick some walls down. He wants to kick some barriers down because for too long we've let people lie to us on, or believed in the wrong thing and we don't realize that we might have, we built the walls in our, for our own prison. Come on. That's good. We have, I mean, even sometimes by the words we speak. 
And that's why I was going to say in my series on words, I started at Gateway, but God wanted me to dip out of here, dip over into this, and now I see how they intertwine. Uh, I just uh, put a, uh, something out that was several years ago, but God brought it back up this week because he wanted us to see it. He said, the words we speak become the walls of our own prison sometimes. The words you speak are the house you live in. You need to be, I, I'm living large and in charge. I, watch your words. Woo. Don't stop the flow. We, the Lord wants us abundantly satisfied. Jeremiah 31, 14. My people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Psalms 100. We're looking at ways of how to not block the blessing, how to not be in the way. I want to be uh, in sync or uh, in, in step with him. Psalms 100. Oh, the Lord is good, y'all. Man, he is so good. I'm telling you, because it, 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 the, the word works. The word works. And I, 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 God can have you in your house by this time next year easily if you grab a hold of this. Well, but you don't know what I got. You don't, I, I, you're right, I don't. Please, I, I'm not trying to be crass or callous or whatever. I don't care. What I think about your situation will not change it. What you think about that situation is everything. Is everything. You know, uh, uh, just recently, this is a, just a reoccurring thing that uh, the Lord has us kind of just reinforcing. Uh, if, if you don't, if everybody in this room believes you can't, but you believe you can, then you will. But if everybody in this room believes you can, but you believe you cannot, then you never will. Truth. It's truth. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Well, they just do this and they do that. It ain't about they. It's about me. He didn't say, he said, according to your faith. You know, we already spoke to it, but I'm going to come back on it. If you can believe, all things are possible. He didn't, he, didn't, he, he didn't concern himself with, well, I know, you know, they all might be against you, and it's going to be a little bit of this and that, and, you know, and you might not make it. That's not in the book. That's not in the book. If it was a truth, it'd be in the book. But it's a lie. So it's not in the book. He said, if you can believe. If you can believe. I, I, tomorrow about this time, that's a reality for somebody in here today. 100%. It's not my word, it's his. But his word will not fail. That's why, I, that's why I can say it, and then it's like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I, it don't matter. It's not up to me to back it up. Man, the, the word does not, some, somebody's been struggling even on the job. The, the word does not need your defense. Somebody's just trying to drag you into a debate, trying to get you just to talk, 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 talk. All they're doing is winding you up, trying to get you out, out of the place you need to be, wasting your time. People, some, there are some people that are called to debate, called to that specific thing. For most of us, it's not. It's not. It's not our call. Uh, anyway, Psalms 100, verse 1, make a joyful noise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Woo! He hollered in church. Yes, he did. I didn't know you could do that. Now, it's decent in order, you know, but there's times you just got to let out a whoop because, I mean, I don't, you know. Whoop! Yeah. It's a, there's a, I think it's a, is it yada? I think it's a Hebrew word for praise, and it's just a holler. I don't know if some of y'all scholars might know that kind of stuff. Uh, somebody, yeah. It's a holler. It's a yada, you know. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Serve the Lord with gladness. It's not a drudgery. It's not a ball and chain. If we believe in that, we believe in a lie. Or, or, or maybe, mm, mm-hmm. Maybe we called ourselves to do something that he didn't call us to do, and now we're mad at him, but it's us. I've seen that happen so many times. Man, in my own life, I want to call myself to do something because it looked fun the way somebody else was doing it, not realizing, man, they had a grace. They had an anointing to do that thing. I, 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 I like the lake. I love being on, I shouldn't say love. I really like being on a boat. That's a good day. You know, and I got, in, in, in the, but I'm not too much of a fisherman. 
I mean, I've done it, and I can do pond fishing and all, but that lake, it gets me. Now, Dave, he can go, and Dave makes catching fish look easy. But I can get in the boat and go try to be like Dave, and I'd be a frustrated boy. Because I don't have on me what he got on him to catch a fish. Now, I don't mind driving the boat. We'll peel out across the water. But it's just, he, he makes it look easy. It's, and, and, and it's like, how do you go up there and catch them things time after time after time? And I come up empty. Because he's got a thing on him that I don't have on me. And if I try to call myself to do his thing, I'm a, you, you see where we're going with this. And I know that's a very simple illustration, but it has a powerful revelation if we'll get it. The anointing makes things look easy that are extremely difficult if you don't have it. That's why you can get to a place and you're serving the Lord, but it's not joyful. Because we're not in the place he needs us to be. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Man, they are spending billions of dollars trying to find out the power behind the Big Bang. Y'all seen that? I mean, it's crazy. All they need to do is read like Genesis. I mean, it's like, hey, you know, give me the money and I'll trade you the Bible. Man, we get some stuff done, man. I'll take your billion dollars and, you know, all your, y'all put, put another Hubble out there, you know. Golly, man, just read. Man, I buy you a nice Bible. I get you bound. I put your name on it. You just give me all that money you spending. Gee whiz. The Lord, he, he made us, not we ourselves. Verse 3, we are his people. Uh, what, what's one of the things that can stop the flow? I, I got to be his people. We got to be his people. Uh, how, how we, uh, as, like I said earlier, how, how am I thinking I'm going to be in the devil's pasture and expect God to feed me? I got to be his people. I got to be his people. He said, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So come back to meekness. He's intertwined. I, 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 to be his sheep, to be his people, then I have to yield to his leading. Well, I don't understand, Lord. I can't even see over that next hill. I don't need to. My shepherd's calling that shot. He's got me. If I can figure it out, then I'm back to self. If I need to figure it out, I'm back to self. If I have to figure it out, I'm back to self. I'm back to pride. I'm back to the place now where I, I mean, he's opposing me. Matter of fact, you, you, the reason it's so important for us to see that is he has to oppose us because he can't back us because he can't bless rebellion or any form of it. Entering his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Oh, come on. He's good, y'all. He's good. He's good. He's good. Nothing but good. Nothing but good all the time. And there's so many lies out there trying to paint the Father in, a, in another light, trying to show him in another light. Well, if God's so good, why did this happen? Man, you'd be surprised the authority he's given to his people. Oh, you know, God's just in control. He's, he's, he's just, he's got it all. Does he? Does he? Or is that religion? Is that a religious lie the devil has sold that we might have bought into? Now, understand, God's got a plan overall, and it's going to come about. It's going to come about. But if he's, uh, it, 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 there are certain things that he has given to you and I, given us free will, given us a choice. He, he will not even force salvation on anyone. The most important decision we will ever make for, throughout entire eternity. He won't force that on us. So why are we thinking he's forcing some of these other things? Oh, well, God's just in control. In control. He's going to make it happen. No. He said, choose you this day who you will serve. As for me and my house. There's a lot more on that. But I'm telling you, there, there is, there is a, a lie uh, about that kind of thing that's gone out, and that's why God's gotten lumped into this, and people don't even realize when you, when you throw that religious, uh, how do I say that properly without, uh, that's just, yeah, it's garbage. It's, it's got to use more words. 
It's a, it's, it's a puke. It's just a it's puke, man. When you puke that stuff out, and people puke that stuff out, you know, and then don't even realize, well, well if God's just totally in control, that means, that means he's okay with trafficking kids. You've got to be kidding me, right? You got, well, God's just in control, and he's got all this worked out. You, and you're just telling me in that same puke that God's okay with trafficking kids. Well, if he's in control, then there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, that's so contrary to the word. If he's in absolute control, why is he going, why do I even need to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done? What's the point in saying it if he's already done it? Or if I have no influence over it? Doesn't even make sense. But I mean, the devil has gotten so many, my people destroyed, he says, for the lack of knowledge. We got to be word people. Word people. Word people. Get in this word and see what God says. See what God says. Psalms 106. Well, Psalms 23, let's just hang. We in, I told you we're going to be in Psalms a lot. And, uh, but we know 23. The Lord is my. But there's a declaration there. There's something that we, we, we got to see. I, I got to be his people. And that's part of the importance of Psalms. That's the importance of Psalms 91, even 23. The Lord is. He is. He's not just yours. He's mine. Amen. He's mine. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not depending on the grass in your pasture, I got my own grass. Now, I don't, that, in Colorado, that really means a lot different. But anyway, I'm, I, I just had to lighten it up just a second. The Lord, yeah, somebody, it's like, woo, 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 you see that going across. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not be in lack. He causes me to lie down in green pastures, lead me beside the still waters, restores my soul. Somebody needs that restoration. The soul is your mind, will, and emotion. I mean, your, our minds need a touch today. They need some calming today the storm on the outside is nothing compared to the storm on the inside but you get the storm on the inside calm down it'll take care of the storm on the outside you know we see that with jesus he's sleeping in the boat they had a storm in the mind even in the water but he had the peace of mind to calm the water he restores my soul leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me you rod and staff comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over goodness and mercy. Follow me all my days, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. What? Forever, 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 forever. Psalms 106. I should have just stayed over there in the hundreds, but that's all right. 106, verse 4. Sound like a radio station. 106, verse 4. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that you bear unto your people. We're talking about not blocking the flow, staying in a place of humility, staying, keeping pride out of us, being his people, the sheep of his pasture. Man, there's several more we could look at, but I feel like we need to probably rest it right here. Remember me, Lord, with favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Visit me with thy salvation. Y'all stand up. We'll go ahead and start wrapping this up. Visit me with salvation. Salvation is... Uh, one, one of the words is a, is a soteria. It's, it's nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. I, was, uh, I shared just uh, not too long ago, Psalms 91 wraps this up. He said, with a long life, will I satisfy you and show you salvation? And uh, one of the words that I, I was, as I was doing a little deeper word search, a little, word, a little deeper digging into this was uh, actually, I, and I think I shared it here a couple weeks ago, where it says, he'll be our avenger. He will be our avenger. You know, he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay and uh so there, there's some things that the lord's doing right now there's some things he's wanting to work if i could get some uh, folks to help me with the altar uh number one uh, we got to be his people uh you, you can't expect the lord to be your avenger if he's not your lord if he's not your shepherd if he's not the the leader of your life so uh it, with that being said and alan or not alan jack uh, if you could bring the lights down just a little bit for me i just it, it's just i want us to focus on him you know nothing holy about having the lights low or you know it, it, it's just so we don't uh, get distracted in this moment because uh, there's some very real dealings uh, right now that are happening all around us and uh, so Satan we bind you uh, we come against strife any kind of interference with what the Lord may have for us right now Holy Spirit I thank you that as you're speaking we are hearing clearly and uh, if you're here today and you've never uh, accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, uh, I'm not asking you to join this church. 
I, I, I'm not asking you to be a part of this house, uh, but I am asking you to just acknowledge as we all, we all need Jesus. Uh, we can't do this without him. No matter what the world says, no matter how you may have been taught, no matter what you may have been brought up in, uh, it's not a weakness to say, I need Jesus. It, it's a reality, but it is the best decision of my life. It will be the best decision of your life, and it will bring such a peace to you and, and to realize that, that God will help you, that God will watch over you, that God will guide you when when we allow when we open up when we let him in he said you heard even this uh earlier this morning behold i stand he says at the door and knock if any man will hear and open i will enter in he said we will uh have an abode together he will dwell in us and be with us but it's it's up to you and i to open that door and if you're here today and you've never opened that door but i also feel like there's some folk and uh man i know in my life i accepted jesus when i was young but oh Wow, I just, I, I, I just, I got so busy. Man, I had a good job. I was making, you know, some good money, and, and I didn't realize how it was. Uh, I just started letting stuff get in the way. And man, it was, it, before I realized that I, you know, I, I, I really got to a point where I didn't think I needed God until I realized I needed God. And he'd never left me. I, I walked away. And I, I had an opportunity uh, when I saw that to uh, just surrender, surrender back to the Lord. Say, Lord, it, forgive me. I, I didn't even, uh, I wasn't looking for it to happen. It just happened. And you know, the good thing is, is, is when I realized that, man, it, it, he wasn't standing up there with his arms crossed and looking all mean and, and saying, I told you so. And why'd you do that, man? There was, there was arms wide open and a, and a welcoming love from the father like a uh, literally like the prodigal coming home and uh if that's you today and and and, and what i'm saying kind of connects with you and you realize there's that emptiness you know you don't have that passion anymore you don't have that fire anymore not that we live for a feeling but uh sometimes he uses those things to uh show us that we walked away i uh, answer that call today it, please don't 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 deny that. Don't ignore that. Uh, every day we're away from Him is a, is a day that we lose the ability to have an enjoyment of life and a, and a goodness of life. And, whew, man, it's just, God wants to do some things, but he's, he, he needs us to open up the doors. There's somebody in here that, and, and, and that, that advocate, you need that advocate to stand in the way. Dude. You've been cheated in some business dealings. And the Lord, uh, our battle's not flesh and blood. Uh, the enemy may have used somebody to come against you, but you can't hold that grudge. you got to let it go. you got to let it go. And, and I'm telling you, if you'll recognize Father God as your advocate, then, then he can make it right. Uh, but you, you need to get that unforgiveness out of your life. And sometimes it's a prayer of agreement to come down and say, man, help me press through because man my heart's hurt and, and my flesh don't want to do this but I, I know I need to do this I just need some prayer man it, there's nothing like getting some power of agreement to, for forgiveness to be able to float and uh, the man the enemy fights he fights every one of us so hard especially in that area trying to get us to hold on and because uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you you, you got a right in the natural you got a right to be angry you got a right you were done wrong you, you were uh, it, it hurt. It hurt. But God's saying, even though you have a right, I want you to walk in righteousness. Right. I want you to take a step up. When you step up into righteousness, that allows God to now come into that situation and be your uh, lawyer, your advocate. Be the one who now goes before you to deal with that thing. That's why the devil, he, he don't want none of us to ever step from right to righteous. Because as long as we're in the flesh and I have a right, we're blocking the righteousness of God from being able to intervene. But you, you take that step today, and I'm telling you, you watch God work. You watch God work. God can shift things. He can change things. He can cause the impossible to be ordinary. Matter of fact, that's where he wants to take the body of Christ. from The, the, the impossible, that's my everyday. The impossible is my normal. If your atmosphere is not impossible, you need to be in the wrong atmosphere. 
Come on, you, you're, you're, you're breathing, you're breathing, you're breathing here. He wants you breathing supernatural. Where the, the, the extraordinary is my ordinary, your ordinary. That's where it ought to be. So, Father, we come in Jesus' name. Just, Lord, show us, show if there's any of this going on. Again, back to it. it, it it's, 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 uh, I'm not trying to bust anybody out, but that rededication thing is real. And uh, uh, you're, you're blocking your blessings in it until you get that relation right. And this unforgiveness, you, you need to step out because there's, there's a chain. It's almost like a chain got you by the leg. And it, it, it's, it's, it's just, the only way to break it is going to be to step out of it. The only way to break it is you got to step. You're going to have to step. Uh, and sometimes he can do it at where you are, but I don't feel that today. There's a... Uh, it, it's because there's also some pride associated with it. None of us need to be too proud to be prayed for. None of us need to be too prideful to have somebody pray for us. That, that's not where we need to be. That's the worst place we could possibly be.